What do you do when you when you change how the world thinks of cinema? What's next? I mean, uh, um, do you keep making the same kind of film? Or if you're a person like Rossellini, uh, uh, which few are, uh, you try something experimental. You push further. It's not just experimental for experiment, experiment's sake, but you push the boundaries further. The impact was a negative one at first, but uh, mainly because of the... Uh, the power of the neorealist movement at the end of World War II, the effect of Open City and Paisa, and of course, Tzatziki's film, Bicycle Thieves, the spiritual rehabilitation of an entire culture and people uh, through cinema. And the three pictures, they were looked at as complete rejections of what was so popular at the time, neorealism in Italy. And they looked like they wanted to be Hollywood melodramas for his new wife, Ingrid Bergman. I don't care about your barley, or your vines, or your new terror. I want to leave this island and go away, far away. Like all the others who lived here and were born here and went away, far away. I think there's such a, a radical shift in, in the three pictures because of, uh, well, they don't look like the other films at all. There's a great intimacy about them. For example, in um, a Journey to Italy, a wonderful sequence where George Sanders comes home late, comes back to the hotel late, and she, uh, she pretends that she's asleep. And you watch all the details, who turns on a light, who opens a door, all of this going on so that they can avoid each other, and then finally, uh, uh, they finally have to uh, acknowledge each other. Yes? What is it? I, I just wanted to make sure it was you. Who did you think it was? I was sound asleep. I, I had so much sun and air today that I was dead tired. I fell asleep almost immediately. Everything is done with this very, very intimate personal detail. They're almost like uh, uh, letters to each other in a way. And the conflicts are from a very, very sorry, personal, sorry. intimate, and lifelike area. And they're more experimental because of that. I want to be with you. And you change too. Relax, smile. I'll go right away if you want me to. I don't want to embarrass you in front of the other men. Stromboli has some aspects of the quote neorealism unquote, mainly because of the location, um, the documentary aspects of it. Still, it has to do with a personal journey and a search of character, the characters Ingrid Bergman plays in these pictures. And she's in so many different settings in these films, so many different situations that are on a one-to-one -one basis rather than dealing with the immediate primal situation of the war and the redefinition in a sense of uh, re redefining the very soul of Italy in a way. Antonio is a good, simple boy. In all his life, his only experience has been his military service. Yes, I understand him too, Father, but who understands me? Over that, which really makes them, I think, stand out even more, um, is uh, there's a an overpowering uh, sense of spirituality about the three films. I think uh, no matter how one lives one's life, and whether it's given a name as humanism or, or some other catchphrase, I really don't know. I know there's a kind of, kind of um, spiritual experience when I watched uh, Journey to Italy and Europa 51. In a case of Europa, it's probably the most striking of all of them, ultimately, because of you're trying to deal with how does one make a change in the world for the better? They come to terms with their humility. They realize it's not all about them. It's almost like fitting in with the world rather than trying to change it. In other words, can you accept love before you can give love? Just purely personal, coming from a background which was a, a very Roman Catholic, mid 20th century, it had a very strong effect on me because I was in areas that people did behave badly at times. And I wondered what we are as people. And here we are coming out of World War II and these people having suffered so much. And yet um, there's still uh, the hope of, yeah, maybe one, in a sense, in these stories could be saints, you see. It doesn't necessarily mean they even have to believe in God.
And that, that was something to me, and uh, that's why I, I'm moved every time I see them. And don't forget other representations of uh, spiritual issues, uh, religious issues even, were done in rather bombastic ways, particularly from what I knew at the time from American cinema. Seeing these pictures were, wasn't so directly approached in the story. It was done on the day-to-day, -day, in a way, the way people live. You know, see, that's what it's about. It's about how one lives. That's the old thing I said in Mean Streets. It was like, you know, you think you go to a church, and you think you have to behave in the church. No, it's outside the church. It's not that the trick is outside. <laughs> it's in the home and in the streets, etc. Those films uh, validated that for me. The miracle that occurs at the end of Journey to Italy is really the um, realization of the, their love for each other. And part of that love is the anger and the alienation they felt all the way through the story. This is part of the journey that they have to take. And I remember being uh, taken by it because of the, uh, the different archaeological sites. Of course, you know, the, the, the reality of the two uh, people being on Earth, the men and woman embracing, dying together in each other's arms, that's what it's about. But I remember the sense of not being so separate from the ancient world and other cultures from seeing that film, being a part of one long 250,000 years of uh, humanity. And I think that struck me somehow. Um, and so when I saw that the two of them somehow at the end of the picture find each other again, I always found that so moving. Catherine, what's wrong with us? Why do we torture one another? When you say things that hurt me, I try to hurt you back, don't you see? But I can't, I can't any longer because I love you. It's the most modern film, I think, Journey to Italy, that began modern cinema in a way. And it isn't just a change in style. It was a change in the execution of art, the perception of it, and the perception of the world, I should say, through art. It's raising uh, cinema to another level. It seems to be observant of the, just the very texture and roughness of everyday existence, everyday life. But in each case, of course, it leads to a place uh, that's extraordinary stumbled into by the characters. You could see it in many different places, even going back to, uh, well, the first one comes to mind is Two for the Road, for example, the road movies. One accepts these films now, whether it's Thelma and Louise or they, they accept them as a, as a kind of film. But this wasn't usually the case before this picture. Where are we? Oh, I don't know exactly. How far is it to Naples? About 100 kilometers, I think. So, in, in, interestingly enough, in, in uh, Stromboli, the priest, who has a wonderful line, compose yourself. Compose yourself. Meditate. Think. Is Renzo Cesana. And uh, he was co-writer, I believe, and uh, the film. Uh, he also acted in a terrific cyan field movie with Lloyd Bridges and Frank Lovejoy called Try and Get Me, um, a noir picture. And then became famous here in America, because at the time, I remember, I, I just discovered this lately, but um, yeah, Renzo Cezanne became very famous in the late 40s. I think it was 48, 49. Uh, I remember my mother watching this. We had a small TV set, and there was very few programs on at the time, maybe two or three channels, that's it. But around quarter to 11 or 11 o'clock at night on one of the networks, there was a 10-minute show in one take called The Continental. And there would be a door, if I remember, there was a door, and there'd be a knock at the door or something. And you're, you're, the camera, it was point of view camera. You, you, the camera with the audience was the visitor. And uh, you'd knock at the door, and the door would open, and there'd be Renzo, says Anna. And he'd tell her, he'd look at the camera, and he says, Don't be afraid, darling. It's only a man's apartment. And the camera would go in. And he'd offer some wine, and he'd talk about how wonderful you looked, et cetera. And all the women in America, I mean, in the East Coast anyway, uh, adored the Continental. I believe it became this very famous parody, uh, more than a parody, on uh, Saturday Night Live with Chris Walken. I hope that doesn't affect you appreciating his performance <laughs> in the picture. No, seriously, because <laughs> he's really good. I, I want to make something out of my life, but this is too much. You, you can't go from one extreme to another. <laughs> I've known these all along. I sympathize with you from 
day you came to the island. That's why I tried to give you whatever spiritual help I could. Oh, you're a good man. Grazie. This will calm you. Drink it. Oh, I'm so ashamed, Father. I may have done wrong. But all I want now is a little happiness. 